Hi girls and boys. This video is on comparing fractions using the cross multiplication method. And this video focuses on why cross multiplication works. Where do those numbers come from? In case you're wanting to know, this is the video for you. So let's get started. First of all, let's start off with providing an example of comparing fractions using cross multiply. I'm gonna write down two fractions, one third and two fourths. So I know that I can compare using cross multiplication and to do that, we multiply our denominator by our cross numerator. Three times two, three times two is six. I'm gonna put a little six up here in that corner. Now I'm gonna cross multiply my other side, my four, times my one. Well, four times one is four, and I'm going to write that in the top left-hand corner. Now, I can see at this point, I don't necessarily need to look at my fractions. I just wanna focus on the two numbers that I just wrote down, my four and my six. Well, between four and six, we look to see which one of those numbers is greater. Six is greater than four, so six would get two dots, four gets one dot, and I'm going to connect my dots. So I can say that one third is less than two fourths. But in case you're wondering, where on earth do those numbers come from and why does this work? I'm gonna show you using numbers and tiles, our fraction tiles here. It has everything to do with finding equivalent fractions using a common denominator. I wanna take each of my fractions and get them to a denominator that I know they have in common and then using my equivalent fraction strategy of multiplication, I'm gonna find what's equivalent. Let's start with one third. Before I can find a fraction that's equivalent, that three and four thirds and fourths share, I have to go through a process of finding a least common multiple. You're going to find least common multiples with these two denominators. So to do that, I want to start off with my three. Let's find all of the factors of three multiples not factors, multiples. Three, six, nine, 12, 15, 18, 21, 24. Okay, so I've got my multiples. Now I wanna find my multiples of four. Four, eight, 12, 16, 20, 24. Now, looking at our multiples of our thirds and our fourths, I find a couple of numbers that they have in common. They both have 24 in common. And if I keep looking down, I see that they have 12 in common. And I can't find any more multiples other than those two that they have in common. Now, least common multiple means I want to find the one that's the least. So between 24 and 12, 12 is our least common multiple. That means I can get both of these fractions equivalent to twelfths. Let's see how that works. So let's look at our first fraction, one third. I want to find an equivalent to one third, which is equivalent to twelfths. So I'm gonna take my one third, I'm going to rewrite it right here, and I wanna find an equivalent. To do that, I wanna use my multiplication strategy. So I wanna ask myself, how do I get from three to 12? Well, I can get from three to 12 times four. Now, to find an equivalent fraction, you apply that same pattern to your numerator what is one times four? Four. Do you see where I just got that number? Boom, there it is. 
Let's do the same for the other side. We said down here that I could get both of these fractions to a least common multiple of twelfths. That means I can get two fourths to twelfths as well. To do that, I'm gonna take my two fourths and I'm gonna rewrite it here. Now this time, I'm gonna kind of be working this way. Now, I wanna ask myself using my equivalent fraction strategy, how do I get from four to 12? Well, that would be times three. And I wanna apply that times three to my other number, my numerator. What is two times three? Two times three is six. Do you see where I just got that number from? Boom, there it is. I found equivalent to both of these fractions. Let's prove it. One third is what we started with. And we said we can get one third and find an equivalent to four twelfths. Let me move that up there. There it is. One third is equivalent to four twelfths. We also said we could get two fourths equivalent. So I'm gonna move my two fourths over here. And here we said we could get two fourths equivalent to six twelfths. So let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six. Let's move these six twelfths over here. And let's just see if they are equivalent. There they are. And yes, indeed, they are equivalent to each other. So I got both of my original fractions to twelfths. And to do that, now I just have to use my common denominator strategy. They're both in twelfths. Well, now you just have to look at how many pieces. What's more, six twelfths or four twelfths? Six twelfths is more. That is why we said up at the top when we cross multiplied, that six is more than four. That's where your six comes from and that's where your four comes from. To wrap this up, cross multiplication works every single time. To start, we took each fraction, we wrote down the multiples for each fraction we found the lowest one that they have in common. And we said that we can find an equivalent for both of our fractions. We can get them both to twelfths. So to do that, we took our one third. We tried to find the equivalent to twelfths. We knew one third was equal to something twelfths. We found our pattern of times four and applied it to our numerator. We did the same thing on the other side. We took our original fraction two fourths. We tried to find an equivalent to twelfths. To do that, we multiplied, we found our pattern. What times four gets me to 12? Well, four times three gets me to 12. So we applied that pattern to our numerator. Two times three is six. The four and the six come from finding equivalent fractions. Lucky for us, we don't have to do all of this every time we compare a fraction. The only thing we have to do is cross multiply. Three times two, six. Four times one, four. And you can find your answer that way. I hope you learned something by watching this video. Thank you very much for watching.